And I pray that we as One Name Church can help you know Him more and be a church that helps people know the name of Jesus. Because this is a church where you can come as you are. You can come no matter what your past and you can be a new creation in Jesus Christ because He will fill you up.
His Holy Spirit that lives within us and that is dwelling here in this very place among us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us, come rest on us. Come, Spirit, when you make it, make my heart come. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you fill me. Come, down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart come. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving.
How many of you guys are thankful for God's grace? When I, when I think of this song, His Grace Holds Me Now, think about all the times we have messed up in our lives. Think about those times where you tried to be perfect as a parent or perfect as a student, and we just fail. I don't know about you guys, but I fail often. I do. And His grace holds us now, meaning that no matter what, it catches us. Have you ever been at the park before as a child and you just see parents that are right there 
with their kids as they play and they get ready to fall and they just get caught just in the nick of time. That's what God is doing for us and that's what he wants to do in our lives. His grace holds us now. And so that got me to thinking of this, this scripture that's found in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4 verse 8, it says this. It says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitudes of sins. And that's just a reminder that this world tells us we have to be perfect, that sometimes we put on this facade that we're perfect, that, you know, nothing's wrong, it's perfect in our lives. But thank God for a church where we can come and just be honest, right? Like we can just be like, you know what, man, someday I, used, you know, I, I mess up. I found myself this week messing up. In fact, I was taking my kids to school and because one of the results of some stuff that happened at work, I kind of went to bed with uh, not a not an ease, peaceful spirit. So I woke up the next day and I was running a little late taking the kids to school. The most trying times is taking your kids to school sometimes. Um, <laughs> like I don't know his parents, but we're in a rush and I'm like, hey guys, let's do this and we gotta do that, come on. And it, for whatever reason, it felt like everything that could go wrong went wrong. Have you guys ever had one of those days? Or am I the only one? Yeah. Right? It was just like, man, they're like, I got the kids in the car and they're like, but I'm hungry. I'm like, I told you to grab something to eat before we left. And it was like, I want my, I want my device. And I'm like, you don't need it. You're going to school. And then I'm like, be quiet. You, be quiet. Sit down. <gasps> You hurt my feelings. I'm like, I didn't try to hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. But it happens. And so I got to a point as I'm driving to the school, I pull up because I understand that the energy that you put, the energy that you give to someone else, it has an effect on them. So I apologized. I said, guys, I, daddy was wrong. That's not the way we wanted to start our day. I ask for your forgiveness. And one of the cool parts of a parent is my kids said, I forgive you. Think about that. My kids told me, I forgive you. Most of the times as parents, we don't necessarily seek the forgiveness of our kids or sometimes care, unfortunately. But the cool part is with God being our father, we never have to go to him and tell him that we forgive him for wrong actions because he's perfect and just. And because of the song, it says his grace, he knew that we would mess up in our lives and he already made a conscious effort to forgive us, to protect us and put us in position to where we can be in right standings with him. I don't know about you, but that is worthy of a big God praise. That is awesome. So if you're in here, I want us to pray. We're going to pray for us as children of God. We're going to pray for the Connect Group leaders. If you guys don't know, this weekend is Connect Weekend. So we're getting ready to launch our Connect Groups. And there's a different weight that's laid upon the Connect Group's um, leaders' lives. So we want to just pray for them as well. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for already making a decision that you love us, Lord. That your love, your patience, your grace, Lord, it holds us. It covers a multitude of our sins, Lord. Daily we fall short. We're thankful for you, Father. Lord, we pray for our Connect leaders, Father, as they start to make the adjustments to their normal schedules as they start to put others first in some aspects of their lives, as they start to prepare, as they start to seek you more, Father. I pray, Lord, that you be with them, Father. Lord, we pray for the people in the congregation, Lord, in the auditorium, Lord, that's on the fence about joining a connect group. Lord, if, they, if it's the right thing to do, should they really do it? Does it really matter? Father, I pray, Lord, you put their spirit at peace knowing, Lord, that they're going to be surrounded by a group of people who believe in them and that's going to encourage them along this journey called life, Father. 
because we know that we can't do it alone and one is too small of a number for greatness, Father. Lord, so we just thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, all right, all right. We can give God a praise for that. Um, right now, it's just that time inside of service where we usually just kind of give you guys a heads up on all the announcements and all the things that are coming down the pipeline. Um, so if it is your first time here, we want to give you a big one name church. We want to let you know to welcome to the... Oh, man, we we're working on that. We're going to do it again. If it's your first time here, all of us at One Name Church wants to tell you, welcome to the family. Yes, that's right. Welcome to the family. Um, we are sometimes weird, sometimes corny, but we love you and you should love us or something like that. Um, it is, um, also, just wanted to let you guys know, if you don't know, that the walk track is going to be happening on October the 3rd. So make sure you're here. You can sign up inside of the Connect Corner. Um, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm sorry. My name is Keith. Um, I get the privilege of being the one of the leaders here. Um, I've been working on something. If you guys will work with me, anyone speak Spanish by any chance? A couple people speak Spanish? All right, perfect. I've been practicing this, so work with me. Um, so, mi uh, poquito habla español. Me llame, it's Keith. No, me, me llamo. Me llamo Keith, okay. Um, Toneras, ten, tenemos translación en español in the Connect Corner. Was that good, decent? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. All right. So we're working on that. Um, but yes, yeah, seriously, we do have translation, if need be, inside of the Connect Corner. Um, we're going to be doing a baptism on the 10th. So make sure you sign up for that as well inside of the Connect Corner. And if right now, if you don't know, we're in the process of doing groups. So groups or small groups, they're everywhere all throughout the whole entire city. So if you're looking for a place to get connected, you can get connected. There's like single groups, there's like youth groups, there's um, parent groups like for moms, and there's leaders groups, or if you're a business leader trying to figure out how to navigate leading an organization, there's a place for you. So there's also a place to sign up inside of the Connect Corner. So I believe that's all the announcements. Um, so Pastor Corey is about to get ready to come on stage and deliver a powerful word in our series. But before he does that, I want you guys to do me a favor and check out this video. So what do you do with doubt? Honest moments. How often do we have them? Even with our closest hard questions, hope that they never ask them. Ironically, they feel the same. We both acted, feeling like a joke. That's why I try to keep them laughing. A lot of people know me as an artist who is very open about my faith. An interesting thing is that in the last few years, I've experienced a tremendous amount of doubt. Some of us grow up in churches. Um, we go to youth group. Our parents are Christians. And so being a Christian is just part of how you understand life. I think a lot of people have questions and doubts and fears, and they feel like they have to work through them on their own. That's where that idea of like, man, do I trust God when I don't see him? When everything seems confusing, do I trust that he's ultimately good and has better ideas for me than I do? I basically, I felt like, let me just wipe everything out that I know about God and start from zero, but let me start with the Bible. When we look through the scripture, we see David and all kinds of people just shaking their fist at God and being like, yo, what's up? Asking questions and, and angry. God wants relationship with us and that he can handle our our fears, or our outbursts, or our emotions with him. Come on, how we doing today? One name. That's my boy Andy Minio. Turn up. You can't stop me. And cool to see his story about how he doubted his faith, even being a musician who travels the world talking about Jesus. And today I want to dive into that. We're in week two of the series of highs and lows. Come on, somebody. 
We're high and then we're low. I'm excited. Last week was awesome. We talked about unshakable faith. And today, I believe God put a word on my heart for anyone in here who has ever had doubts about God. And that's when the room goes silent. Because you know what happens in 2021. All the A-plus Christians, what do they say? You can't doubt God. But the reality of life is it's real and we have those feelings and I want to unpack that today because yes, I'm a pastor and I've had my doubts as well. And how do we go through that? How do we go through life of the highs and lows and still have faith in times of doubt? If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Corey, born and raised in the streets of Hialeah, baby. And today's a good day because the Dolphins are 1-0. and We'll see after 1 o'clock if that is going to stay the same, go to 2-0. and I don't know. But I'm from South Florida, born and raised. I love it here. I tried to move away to somewhere else, but God said, stay right here. I need people that are from here in this city. Amen? Anyone a native in here? Three people. Come on, somebody. The rest of you move away because it's too expensive. But God provides. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bible, I want to dive right in today and talk about what I was, gonna, what I was uh, explaining here in the beginning. And we're going to dive into a story in Mark. Everyone say Mark. All right, so get your Bible out. Bring a physical Bible because that will help your life. Not get distracted on the phone. Amen? Because the phone is the apple phone. The fruit is the Garden of Eden. It's the, the knowledge of good and evil. So it will distract you right there, that apple. So make sure. So we have right here in Mark, if you would turn to me, and I'm just going to read a story about Jesus. And he was talking to a guy, a father, who was dealing with one of his children being sick and demon-possessed for a while. I shared this scripture in our prayer and fasting series, but I want to take another look, a different look at this scripture, and I want to go through the lens of the father. The father that was in this scripture that had a child that was, that was dealing with a demon possession for a while. And this father was struggling with his faith. Because life happens, right? Things happen. Sickness happens. And maybe you're sitting here today asking, if God's a big God, if God is what, who he said he is, then how can he allow these things to happen? And this is the father. He was talking about this. But I just love how Jesus, God in flesh, looked at this guy and explained to him the power of faith. I'm going to start in verse 14. And this is what it says. It says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. Wow. Sounds like 2021. Teachers of the law arguing as soon as all the people saw jesus they were overwhelmed with wonder ran to greet him what are you arguing with them about he asked what are you arguing with them about he asked a man in the crowd answered teacher i brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech whenever he it seizes him. It throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long should I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. Everyone say, bring the boy to me. Everyone say, bring faith to Jesus. Come on, somebody. This is good. So, so they brought him. So they brought him. Everyone say they. Make sure you understand your pronouns and all of those connecting words in the Bible. They matter. You know that? They matter. And look what he says. When the spirit saw Jesus, come on somebody, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion because it knew it was about to get casted out in the name of Jesus. It fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has, been, has it been like this? How long have you struggled with your faith? How long have you dealt with this season? How long have you dealt with this low? He said, from childhood, he answered. 
it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. And look at what the father asked. And this is what I feel like a lot of us are asking in 2021 in our life here today. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. But if, the father asks, but if, Jesus, you can do. And look at what Jesus says. He says, if you can, or he says this. He says, if you can, but if, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Jesus looked at the guy and said, if I can, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, I do, I, I show up to church. I am here. I do what I, I, I'm walking by faith, God. But Jesus, help me un, get rid of my unbelief because I'm struggling. And look at what he, Jesus came in. When Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he said he rebuked the spirit, you deaf and mute spirit. He said, I command you to come out and never enter him again. The spirit came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, that many said, that many said, he's dead. How many times do we determine our faith on what many say? And say, well, they said that. My faith is determined by many said. Many said the boy was dead, but Jesus. Come on, somebody. But Jesus. Jesus come on say but Jesus to your situation today but Jesus I see the but come on somebody wake up church I see the but they're looking at like he's dead but Jesus took him by the hand lifted him to his feet and he stood up and after Jesus got indoors his disciples asked him privately everyone say privately privately say privately why couldn't we drive him out Jesus this kind of faith can only come out through prayer this kind of miracles can only come out through prayer Jesus says I titled this message today misplaced faith misplaced faith let me ask you this question have you ever lost something before come on church speak back to me I'm from Hialeah I'm Puerto Rican and I'd like you to speak back to me if not I feel like you're falling asleep has anyone else lost something for? Come on, be real in the streets. Lost your keys? You ever lost your wallet? How about the real demon of them all? Lost your AirPods. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you don't have AirPods, we forgive you. Jesus, bless your church with some AirPods. They will change your life, especially the noise cancellation ones. Because all I got to do when it gets loud in my house is put them in my ears. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. Cancels out all the noise, all the distractions. But I was hanging out at my parents' house because I like to go there and watch the games. And plus, my dad cooks really well, so I like to go eat his food. Come on. It's really good. So I go there, and I was hanging out. And I don't know what happened. My cousin was there, and we were... You know, my cousin, he's young, so he always likes to, to, to come and, like, challenge my manhood. When you're young, 22-year-old, like, let me see if I can buck up against a 30-year-old guy. I'm like, bro, you're younger than me. You have more muscles than me. You're going to beat me up. But I don't know. He was trying to wrestle with me, and I don't know. I had my AirPods in because I was trying to do whatever, and we were wrestling, and something happened where the AirPods just flew, and they went in there, and, and they went somewhere, and and if you've ever been to my mom's house, I love you, mom. Uh, forgive me. Don't get mad at me. She has a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. You ever been like that, someone's house? She needs a bigger house. We're praying for that so she could get a bigger house to fit all her stuff. She's got her angels. She's got all the, now she has grandchildren stuff. It just gets crazy up in there. So when my AirPod flinged out, it went into the pit of no return. The pit of no return. And I was there, I was looking, I was like, I lost it, I got to find it, where's it at? And, I, and I'm looking and I'm trying to use my eyes and, and I'm coming and I'm looking and I got everyone else looking with me and I just can't find it. I'm like, where's my AirPod? These are $250. This is ridiculous, I can't lose this. I can't use, use one AirPod, I need, I need to find it. So we're looking, it's like 30, 40 minutes and I just can't find the AirPod. And I'm looking 
And then here comes my beautiful wife, Jamie Farver. And I love her because sometimes she gets frustrated with me because I'm such a bad looker. Anyone a bad looker? A bad looker. Come on, somebody. Like, I'm praying for my daughter. I'm like, JC, go in there. She's like, I don't see it. It's right there. It's just bad look. So Jamie comes in and she says, you're looking, but I don't think you're doing it the right way. I don't think you need to be just looking. I, need, I think you need to be lifting some things. So she's like, you got to pick up this stuff. You got to get it out. You got to move this around. You know, I love you, Mom. But you got to move the stuff. You got to get it out. Move it over here. Move the angels over here. And I was looking for 30 minutes, and I was moving. But after I lifted things up, we found my AirPod. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Give a shout of praise in here. But I tell you that story because the first instinct that I had when I lost my AirPod was, it's gone. It's gone. It's not here. Anyone like that when they lose something? It's gone. My wallet's gone. Cancel all the credit cards. Keys, they're gone. Need a new car or something. Call the dealership. It's gone, right? Anyone like that? They're just, when you lose something, it's like, it's gone. Buy something new. Can't find my shirt, wife. It's gone. I need a new shirt. I'm like that. I'm always quick like that to be like, it's gone. And I think most of us are like that with our faith. We have one day of, I don't feel you, God. We have one day of, I don't see you, God, working in my life. And we say, my faith is gone. I don't have faith anymore. I don't know. You know, I, I come to church and not, I, don't, I don't feel it. And I don't know, God, a pandemic happens. The faith is gone. Oh, my gosh, I can't, I can't find it. And I believe most of us are are struggling with doubt and unbelief because we're looking but not lifting. We're looking to see where God is at, but we're not lifting. And the first instinct we have is it's gone. And I think the highs and lows in life tend to do this to our faith. They tend to bring doubts inside our life. And I don't think this, this is what I want to tell you today. I don't think you've lost your faith. I think you misplaced it. I don't think your faith is gone. I think you misplaced it. I think you've put your faith in the wrong things. I think you've put your faith in too much of the worldly things. I think you put your faith in too much in human beings. Come on, somebody talk back to me. I just feel like we've misplaced our faith today and we're over here struggling and instead of looking to find it and looking to see God, we're like me. It's gone. I'm leaving. I'm not. I can't find the airport. I'm buying something new. I'm going on to something different. And this was the father in the story. The father in the story, he was struggling. He was seeing. I love how the scripture says the religious leaders were arguing and it was distracting them from seeing Jesus. I believe most of us have lost our faith and can't find it today because we listen to the wrong people. We think because someone's on TV and says that they're a pastor and they know all things, that they know all things. Our faith is our responsibility, amen? And God wants to speak to you. And instead of saying, I need to go to a pastor to get to God, I got the high priest, which is Jesus Christ. I don't need to go to anyone besides Jesus. And if I'm struggling with my unbelief, I'm going to go to Jesus. Amen? Because I'm not going to put my faith in what other people say. I don't think you've lost your faith. I think you've misplaced it. Have you said this in the last six months? I think I've lost my faith. You didn't, know, you didn't lose it. You just don't know how to look. You're like me. You don't know how to look. Because I believe that the presence of doubt doesn't mean the absence of faith. I believe the presence of doubt in your life does not mean the absence of faith. If you're an A-plus Christian in here, maybe this message is not for you. This, I got faith through it all. I got faith through the storms. And I got faith through it all. I got faith through pandemics, and I don't even know that song. But I just feel like I'm not an A-plus Christian, and maybe you're not. And the reality is we might have doubts, and we might struggle just like the Father. But in owning our doubts, it does not disqualify our faith. 
And I want to flip the script for some people in here who have had bad church experience, thinking you got to walk in here, having it all together, having all the knowledge in your head. No, God wants to meet you where you're at. God wants to come to you where you're at, in your doubts, in your unbelief. Even when you don't know what's going to happen, you say, God, where are you? That's where God is there the most. Help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief. See, I, I, I struggled this before because growing up, you have pastors, you know, and as a pastor, you're always supposed to come and say, oh, I've got to encourage people for faith. And I remember I was teaching in youth ministry and I was trying to get the, the kids to get fired up. Come on, where's my young people at in this house? Come on, wake up, high schoolers, middle schoolers. And I was preaching to them and I was just like, you know, I was just being real because I think with teenagers, if you're not real, they won't listen to you. Amen? Come on, teenagers, be real, holler back in. If you fake, they they going somewhere else. So I'm like, I got to be real. So one day I was like, you know what? I was in high school, and I was just struggling with my doubts, and I didn't even know if God was real. I was in the church, and, and I was sharing a story and telling them, you know, through that I just felt God, and I was be able to work with God and have some faith. And I remember I, I was there, and after I preached, I had a pastor pull me aside and says, Corey, you cannot preach about doubt. You know, you can't do that. We have to preach about faith. We have to, basically what he's telling me, water it down so people can get a good word and leave and go home and feel encouraged. And I say, I told him, well, if I'm not going to be real, I don't want to do this. Because the reality is this. If you look at the people in the scripture, all of them struggled with doubts. All of them struggle with unbelief. And they didn't not share it with God. They were real with God. They, they spoke to God. But then through that unbelief, through that dealing with God, it gained their faith. It grew their faith. And I want to encourage you today that it's okay to not know all the answers. Hallelujah. Can you release that today? How many feel free that you don't have to know all the answers? Thank you, Jesus. I don't need to know all the answers. People ask me about things all the time, and they try to bring it up to me, and I said, you know what? Let the Holy Spirit convict you on how you feel about that. Because I, there's some things in the Scripture, there's some, some things that we won't understand until we get to heaven and say, God, what did you mean by this? And I've went to college, I've studied it, I've been there, I've been pastoring for over 14 years, and I've done all this, and I don't got all the answers, but I know who holds the answers, amen. His name is Jesus, he is the answer, he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. And when we're struggling with our unbelief, we need to do what the Father said to Jesus, I do believe, I am here, I am showing up, but help me, Jesus, with my unbelief. Help me, Jesus, when I don't see it. Many of us have said, I'm losing it this past year. I'm struggling this past year. Some of us say, the devil stole my joy. The devil stole my faith. No, you lost it and you left it for him to take. The devil didn't steal it. You gave it to him on a platter. Because the faith is not determined, like we talked about last week, on my emotions. It's not determined on what's happening in the world. It is determined by who God is. And the presence of doubt doesn't mean the absence of faith. And I will say that again and again because this will help set up what we're doing. I love this quote. As you saw, Andy Minio, he wrote a whole album struggling with his faith. And he has a quote here in his, one of his, his songs. It says, the second you're furious with God, you're tumbling close. Because you cannot be furious with someone who is not there. And I just love this because God is there. We may not feel it and we may struggle with doubts. It's okay to have doubts, but we can't let doubts lead to dead ends. We have to go to God on it. We have to be like the Father and, and seek Jesus and ask for him to help us. So how do we do this? I'm going to give you four quick ways, and then you can go out into your day and have a great day. Four quick ways of how you can have faith in times of doubt, in times of highs and lows in life. Four ways. You guys ready for this? Is this helping anyone here? Four ways. First way, learn to ask Jesus privately. That'll preach. Most of us 
when we're struggling with doubts, we come out on Facebook and we attack everyone else and because we're struggling internally believing if God said if, if it's true or not. We come out and we attack. And look at what it says in the scripture. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we do this? They were struggling with doubt. They went to Jesus probably. They didn't stop him in the middle of the thing. Why do you do this? They, you know, they, they, they knew because they were around the religious leaders who were arguing all the time. And because they were arguing, no one believed because all the religious leaders were arguing. Does that sound familiar? That in 2021, everyone wants to argue. Why don't people want to come to church and love Jesus? Because the religious leaders are arguing. Some of the things we need to work out with God need to be privately. Some of the doubts that we're struggling with need to be privately. If you ain't working out with Jesus privately, don't post it publicly. Come on, somebody. If you ain't working it out with Jesus privately, if you ain't open your scripture up privately, let the Holy Spirit convict you privately. Don't talk about it publicly. I think sometimes we go too public before we deal with it ourselves with Jesus. And we got to deal with it privately. How much better off would it be if we asked Jesus privately than saying things publicly? As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder, ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, they said, he asked. Instead of blaming the teachers of the law, we need to deal with this internally with Jesus. Most people leave a church because they're hurt by a church. Or I didn't like how the pastor dressed, or I didn't like the music. Or, I didn't like it was in a movie theater. It smelled like popcorn. I don't like that we have to wake up and do this and we start to doubt God because of what humans have done. Humans will let you down. I don't care if they're a pastor. I don't care if they have 70,000 people on Instagram. That doesn't mean nothing. I think we have to Go to Jesus privately and seek him privately when we're struggling to do what the Father said. Help me with my unbelief because popular opinion never overrides God's purpose. And sometimes we're going to popular opinion and we're missing out on God's purpose because we are opening our ears to what everyone else is saying and not what God has for us. God wants to get you through that unbelief. He wants to build your faith, but we need to go to God and not seek everyone else. One person claps. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. One person is getting this message today. Because you know what? They don't have the last word. God does. Sometimes we go public and get into meaningless arguments when we need to wrestle with Jesus privately. Sometimes I need to do what my wife says, and you do too. Shut your mouth and just go pray about it. Because I'm always like, what are we going to do? God's not here. He's not going to help us start the church. You know, where are all the people at? It's the pandemic. They don't even love Jesus. Is anyone going to show up? Everyone in church is high and low and high. They only come on September 12th. What are they doing? We give away ice cream, and then they come? And I'm wrestling, like, I doubt all this guy. But when I get in my flesh, do you see where that leads me? The same is true with you. So ask God, help me with my unbelief. And I'm going to go to him privately. Number two, is this helping anybody? Because this can be a therapy session for me. I don't care. It's a therapy session for me. Thank you, guys. Number two, ask God to increase our faith, not to decrease our doubts. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. Immediately, I love how it says, immediately, Jesus said, hey, are you struggling uh, with this? What do you mean, if I can? And he didn't like wait and just go, well, if you can. He said, immediately, because he had a foundation. He was there. He, he read the scriptures. He went to church. He knew this. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. He asked to increase his faith. Not to decrease his doubts. I do believe means that this guy had a belief system. But he was struggling with unbelief. Does that make sense? I was raised. I know the belief system. I've been a part of the belief system. But I have some doubts about it. So Jesus helped me increase my faith. 
Because I think most of us, we struggle with faith because we have yet to plant our roots in Jesus and then belief system. And we have yet to say, I believe this. And that's why we jump to conclusions too much about life. And we waver up and down, hot and cold, all the time with our faith. But he's saying instead of jumping to conclusions... You need to start with your belief system and say, God, increase my faith. Because just because, right now, just because you have unbelief does not mean you're an unbeliever. Does that make sense? There is a difference between having unbelief and being an unbeliever. Unbelievers, they don't know about Jesus. They're, they're, they, may not be, they might be atheists and they don't know and... But, but the man did not say, I'm an unbeliever. He said, I have unbelief. He didn't abandon his belief system. He just told God to help. And I think too much, we just go try to wrestle with our doubts instead of, God, increase my faith. God, build my faith. Help me through this season, God. I need you in this season. I know it's struggling, but help me with my unbelief. Increase my faith today. But most of us, we abandon it. Some of us don't show up to church for 10 weeks because we're struggling. This is the place you need to be. Because everyone here is probably thinking the same thing. We let's work it out together. Groups, groups, groups. Sunday's not going to just get it for you. We have to ask God to increase our faith. We're going to have to own this for ourselves, just like the Father did. Help my unbelief. You have to own it for yourself. You have to own your faith for yourself. There are some things we need to unbelieve before we can believe what we need to believe. Amen. And some of us are listening to the wrong people because faith doesn't disappear. It deteriorates and wears away. You know that? It doesn't disappear. If you called on the name of Jesus and you said, I believe, and he's transforming your life, just because you go through highs and lows in your life, your faith doesn't disappear. You've misplaced it. You've put it somewhere else. You've put it in the hands of people. You've put it in the hands of circumstances. And we shouldn't let that determine our faith. We should say, you know what, God, I need you to help me with my unbelief. Because my belief system's there. We're too quick to give up on the faith. Like I was willing to give up on my AirPod. I was I'm out, I'm out. That's, oh, I don't feel it today at church. I'm out, I'm out. I don't feel it today in this marriage. I'm out, I'm out. I don't like how the dolphins are playing. I'm out, I'm out. I don't like this in my job. I'm out, I'm out. How about you stay? There is something about staying power. And maybe if you stay long enough, God will reveal his presence to you in due season if you do not give up. Come on, I'm preaching for one person today. I believe it. Because this is what I believe. Anytime you need certainty, it prohibits your ability to experience things that God has spoken over your life. Drop the mic. One person. I believe it's possible that we come to, to conclusions too quick. And I believe we feed on the wrong things. Because what you feed on, you lead on. What you feed your life becomes your life. You feed on the bad news, you're going to be looking at the bad news. I feed on bad news. I watch the news every day. All oh, the world's ending. No, we walk by faith, not by sight. I don't walk by what I see. So feed on the word of God and ask God to increase your faith because bad news creates bad beliefs. You listen to bad news a lot, it becomes your belief system. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I'm helping you out here. We can't. Some of us, we watch the news too much. Turn off whatever channel you watch and get into the word of God if you're struggling with unbelief because the news will not help you with your belief it will not it will make you want to move to a random island and never turn back it will but I want to get in the word of God which is called the good news the good news gives me peace. The good news gives me joy. The good news increases my faith. And I will get into the word of God while everyone else is getting to the word of man. And I will seek that and ask God to increase my faith. Because when you feed on the gospel, your belief system becomes the gospel. When you feed on it. Get off social media, young people. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You're too concerned about someone giving you $10,000 that you get hacked and you miss out on what God has for your life. I love you, Tim. Tim got hacked this week. 
I was talking to the guy too, like, what are you doing? If you love Jesus, you would tithe that money. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I knew it wasn't Tim when they answered, because Tim is a faithful servant of God. Come on. If Tim had 10 G's, you better hit me up, bro. We're going out. We're going to the club or something. I don't know. What you feed your life will determine your belief system. Get off social media. Because you know that even in the bad news, God still works even when you doubt. Look at what it says. When Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, I command you to come out. The spirit came out at once, even through the father's unbelief. Jesus still worked. Jesus still moved. If I can, do you know who you're talking to? And the faith needs to be more in who God is, not what God can do for us. And sometimes we pray to God like he's Santa Claus. I need this. I need this. Now, why don't we pray to God and ask him, God, give me more faith. Build my faith. Jesus did it even when the Father said if. Increase my faith, God. Help me. Number three, you ready? I'm almost done. We're almost done. Get around his followers, but go to Jesus for answers. You want to know how to deal with your unbelief? Get around his followers. Look at what it said. I asked your disciples, the father said, to drive out the spirit, but they could not. And what I love about this is he got around the followers. He knew that these dudes hung out with Jesus. So I'm going to get around where Jesus is at because that's going to help me with my unbelief. That's the first step. I got to get around people. Some of you need to get into the groups, 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 and make sure you're getting into groups, 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 and make sure you don't just show up to Sunday but get into a group, group, because I want to be around people who have the same belief system as me so when the world starts to crumble around me, I can say, this person's got my back. You struggling too? Let's do this together. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for Jesus. Sunday's not going to do it for you. Groups, groups, groups. We have to get around his followers. We do. We got to get around the followers of Jesus. Because good company or bad company will corrupt your character. But good company will elevate you where God has called you to go. They got around people who had access to Jesus. But they didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. Because the people that are around Jesus do not have the power to transform your life. Jesus does. They got around the church. They got around the followers. But they went to Jesus for answers. They didn't go to the followers. They will help you. They will put you on the right direction. But they are not God. Many of us lost our faith in Jesus because we put our trust in people. That'll preach. So I, I, know a fr I know friends right now who said, I want nothing to do with the church in 2021. They hurt me. They hurt my heart. I don't care about this anymore. Because if they loved Jesus, they wouldn't treat me like that. Why are you going them for answers? Get around them, or maybe you got to get out of that current situation. But they shouldn't determine your faith. You shouldn't lose your faith because of what someone who says they call on the name of Jesus treats you. Do you know how Jesus was treated by his one and only dude that was the right guy? He was denied three times. Then one of his disciples, you know, he, 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 he said, hey, forget you. Hey, that's Jesus. He's going to the cross. He sold him out. The people right around him. You can't trust people. You can love people and get around them. You can't walk around like, oh, I'm not going to go anywhere because I don't trust people. You can't get like that. you got to get around his followers. But go to Jesus for answers. I asked your disciples to, to drive it out, but they could not. Don't go to church anymore because I got burned. People said, I don't go to church anymore. I got burned. I don't trust pastors anymore. All pastors are horrible. All churches are jacked up. Yes, you know who's people are in churches? All people are jacked up. Do not let someone else's faith someone else's life determine your faith in jesus find a place one name church where you can get plugged in people love you 
They're not perfect because, you know, I'm jacked up. Look at that, this jacked up preacher from Hialeah. Hallelujah. I like to get down. Yeah, let's go. Bah. You know, I'm jacked up. I mess up too. I, I don't say the right things. I get fired up. But we love Jesus. Get into a healthy culture, but go to Jesus for answers. I will guide you in the right direction, but I am not Jesus. Can everyone just break that down to me? Come on, give a shout today. I think I'm breaking some chains of some of your thoughts about church in the last 10 years. It is changing. Revival is coming. And Jesus is trying to tell you today, come to me with your unbelief. Because our faith is not based off his followers. Our faith is based off Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith. Ephesians 2.20. We built our foundation on the apostles and the prophets. We, we, they help us do that with Christ as the cornerstone, the center. Hebrews 12.2. Looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who writes the story? Jesus. Stop putting your faith in that great preacher that's on Instagram or someone who's good. Put your faith in the author and the finisher of our faith who the joy set before him died on the cross for you. Isaiah 55 says your ways are higher than my ways. Put your trust in Jesus. Go to Jesus for answers but get around his followers. I wonder have you been losing your faith because you've been fighting on the wrong level with the wrong people? You were afraid of what you were walking into, but you forgot who you were walking in with. And if Jesus is in your life, it doesn't matter if the world is against me. My God is for me. It doesn't matter if I struggle with unbelief. I'm going to keep pressing through. I'm going to be like the Father. I do believe Jesus. Everything in me and my belief system does believe. But I need you to show up. I need you to give me a sign. I need you to move in my life. Help me with my unbelief, God. Give me an answer. Stop going to self-help books in the internet. Go to the Father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus is there with arms wide open, ready for you. Help me with my unbelief. And the last point is this, and we're done. We've got to get out of here. Lift before you look. Hallelujah. Lift before you look. Like me with those AirPods. I was just looking in all the wrong places, and I just said, I'm done. Jamie came in and said, lift the thing. Sometimes looking means lip lifting. The problem is you don't know how to look and you're not lifting. You give up too easily. The greatest faith is right underneath that biggest doubt. And if you would start lifting, you will find an answer. Amen? We can't just come to church on Sunday and expect all the doubts to go away. We have to seek God every single day and ask him, I'm going to lift. I'm going to lift. I'm going to lift my eyes. See, the turning point for the father was this. The boy looked so much like a corpse. Many said were dead. Jesus took him and lifted him to his feet. The turning point for the father was when he stopped looking at the crowd, stopped looking at the disciples, he stopped looking at the symptoms. He stopped looking at the season, and he started to look to Jesus. And when he lifted his head and looked to Jesus, he saw the King of Kings, and he saw a miracle, and Jesus lifted his boy up and healed him. Some of us got to get our heads up and our eyes on Jesus and do some heavy lifting with God this week. Amen? I'm going to work out in the Word. I'm going to work out seeking God. I'm going to do some heavy lifting before I throw my faith away and say it's gone. It's not gone. You misplaced it. You got to go get it back and do some heavy lifting to seek God in his presence and say, I will lift my eyes to the heavens because that is where my help comes from. That is where my help comes from. My help doesn't come from anything else. It comes when I lift my eyes to the mountains. Psalms 120, 
one, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Isaiah 40, look up. Everyone say, look up. Look up into the heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out like an army, one after another. Not a single one is missing. Luke 21, now when things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is near. I see Jesus coming to your doubt today. Will you see him coming? Or are you so down here, downcast, arguing with the religious leaders? Arguing with the religious leaders. Arguing with the religious leaders with your thumbs and not getting your eyes above the noise and lifting your eyes to see Jesus coming to your doubt today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I feel like Jesus is coming to your doubt today, like the Father. Help me with my unbelief, Jesus. I do believe, but help me. We got to lift our heads today. We got to lift before we look. And we got to come to Jesus and we got to ask him, Jesus, I need your help. I need you. Like the Father said, I need you to show me. I need you to heal. I need you to show up in my life. I, I believe you. I know I stand on the word of God. I believe that you're going to show up. I believe in your promises. But I need you to help me with my unbelief. God is coming to your unbelief today. You just have to receive it. And if you're in here today and you're saying, you know what, Corey, I've been struggling with this. Maybe you, you're not even a follower of Jesus. You walked in here saying, you know what, I'm skeptical about church. I don't know. Someone invited me. Well, the good news is this. The good news is this. The good news is this, that Jesus came. He died on the cross for your sin. And he is there with arms wide open. That no matter what you've done, he will wrap you in his love, wrap you in his glory. And all you have to do is call on his name. And if you're in here and you're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm done with the, the world. I'm done with that. I need a strong belief system. The Lord is here for you. All you have to do is call on his name. If that's you today, would you raise your hand? Say, I want to call on the name of Jesus. I, I need a belief system. I don't know what I believe. But today's the day I want to believe in Jesus. Lift your hands. I see you. I see you up there. I just say, I, I want to be, I want to be daring today to say, I want to follow Jesus today. I believe in you, Jesus. All you have to do is pray this prayer. Say this. Bow your head. Say, God, I believe. Say, God, I believe that you are God that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. And today's the day I follow you. I lift my eyes to see you, Jesus, because you are the way, the truth, and the life. I go to you for answers. Come into my life. Be my belief system. Be what I stand on. You are the cornerstone, and I follow you today. I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said. Someone give a shout for the ones who accepted Jesus in here. Come on, I can't hear you. For the rest of you, why don't you stand to your feet? Because maybe you've been walking in here with some unbelief. Maybe you think that just showing up 52 weeks of the year will get you in right standing with God. No, God wants you to come to the unbelief. Come in your pain. Come in your brokenness. Come when you don't understand. Come and say, God, increase my faith. So why don't you lift your hands up and say, God, I don't feel like it, but God, increase my faith. God, increase my belief. Help me with my unbelief. Why don't you lift your eyes to heavens right now and say, this is where my help comes from. This is where I'm going to look to in times of doubt and need. I need you, Jesus. I need you in my life right here, right now. And I want you to lift your hands up and we're going to sing this in the name of Jesus. And you got to declare, I believe doubt is leaving in the name of Jesus. But we got to lift our hands and declare it here today. Come on, let's sing this out in faith. I believe it. my eyes only to you, God. Come on, declare these words. I will lift my eyes. I will lift my eyes. Only to you, God. Only to you. I will lift my eyes. I will lift my eyes to you, God. Because you're
your eyes to him today, church. I will church. lift my eyes only to you, only to God. You, God. Only to you. I will lift my eyes. I will lift my eyes to you, God. God, we lift our eyes to you today. Help us with our own belief. We believe, God, but help us in times of trouble, in times of seasons where we don't understand, when people leave us too early, when we don't have the, all the answers. Help us, Jesus. We need your presence to convict us and show us the way. We lift our eyes to you. Your people lift your eyes to you today. And I declare faith is coming to their household in the name of Jesus. I declare they will walk in the name of Jesus in faith. And we will have an army that's rising up in faith. That no matter what is happening, that revival will start in this city. Because faith is what we have. That's all we have, God. And we put it in you, Jesus. We put it in you. So I declare this over every single person's life today. And I believe they're going to walk out of here with more faith. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said. Come on, someone get a shout in faith. Come on. Thank you, the one person up there. Hallelujah. They got some faith in here today. Thank you guys for being here today. Hopefully that helped you. We got groups. Our leaders are going to be outside. They're going to sign up. Groups, groups, groups. You got to get in. Groups, groups, groups. Sign up. It's going to be awesome. And uh, that's a way to help build your faith in this season. Let me pray a prayer, a blessing for you, and then we'll leave. God, we come to you, and we just pray blessing over your people. Enlarge their territory. Presence fill their life. The presence of you, God. And I pray you give them opportunity that they didn't even know what was coming. And they use it to glorify you. Bless their families. Bless their finances. And I just say you bless their faith here today. The three F's in the name of Jesus. I thank you. We love you. We praise you. If you receive it. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. One more shout. I believe it. Hallelujah. We love you guys. Thanks for being here. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next week.